Ways and Means, please join me in a pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Um, is there anyone here for public participation or public comment today? No? Uh, nobody in the audience. Um, Steve, do you have a comment? Yeah, I just wanted to remind people that the sidewalk committee has a survey out and that if anybody wanted to provide input, they can do so. Um, they can either see me at the end of the meeting and I'll give them the link, or um, there are forms at the library that they can go to and uh, fill out. Thanks. And uh, also, I think in the vein of public service, I think the, uh, Amy will probably tell us again later, but uh, Burlington is almost 220 years old. So tomorrow, apparently after 11 o'clock, there will be cake and a card to sign for the town of Burlington. And uh, so rejoice. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, right. <laughs> All right. Um, any reason not to just take the agenda in the order that was published, starting with uh, county, town hall one and accounting? You guys uh, <clears throat> top of things? All right. Who's here for accounting? Department 135. Subcommittee. Thank you. Any other? Uh, you guys have any other comments on, on that budget? Yeah, I just before we get too far into it, I have a couple of housekeeping matters that I just wanted to draw everyone's attention to in terms of the budget binders and updates. Um, you'll see on the back table out there, there's a new new updated scorecard. There's also some a few um, replacement tabs. There's the assessors department um, has a replacement tab. Board of Registrars has a replacement tab, which I emailed to you when we made the updates. Um, so you may or may not have replaced it on your own. Um, and also Council on Aging, which was also emailed, but is back there in case you need to update. Marge is on tonight, so you may want to have the um, updated version. And I'll go grab them when we're done and pass them around if anybody needs it. And then there were two other edits that I didn't print an entire new tab for because they were just um, typographical errors. So I don't know if people have their binders right now, if we just want to make those updates very quickly so that everybody has the same. Looks like most of you have them on the, for the building uh, department, which is tab 241. 241, thank you. Um, on the cover sheet, the percentage increase should read 1.79. And then on their summary page, at the bottom where it lists the FTEs, um, it should be 
eight employees, eight FTEs. Here's me say seven. Say that again, honey, I'm sorry. Um, on the summary page where it lists the FTEs, it now says seven and seven, it should be eight and eight. And then the last correction is in the treasurer's tab, which is, I believe, 145. And that is also a correction to the number of employees. It should read 10 over 10 instead of 10.43. Does anybody need a copy of the Council on Aging that didn't pick it up on the way and I'll grab them when I get up? Because Marge like Roger is emailed it. Yeah, so everybody got it. Okay, great. Thank you. So I apologize for the bouncing around. I, I, I messed up the orders of order of operations and Whitney was supposed to go first before I came up here to do that. Um, so David did his nice presentation. And <coughs> it up. Um, just a... Um, just one comment on the on the personnel lines that we that we went through was that um, you know the reason that it's down a little bit year over year is because we had a replacement of uh, assistant town accountant also who was uh, in the in the BMEA union and was top step who she was replaced by someone that was you know, relatively or much lower step so that that added into there was other changes with two people going through the steps. Um, and a longevity change in the part-time. So I just want to point out that there were other changes. Great, thanks. Any questions? Frank. Just um, to reiterate something. So well, I think nearly all of these budgets, the, the cost of living increases are not in the state of right to the power of the state of the people. And all of the polling numbers will be housed inside of negotiated settlements as one lump sum. Yeah, thanks, Frank. That's a good point across all the budgets. Um, anything else or motion? Mr. Chairman, motion to approve the town accountant budget at three hundred and sixty-seven thousand three hundred and sixty-one dollars. I'll second. All in favor? Okay, thirteen is approved. Zero opposed. Sorry, opposed. <laughs> Extensions. Abstentions. Thirteen zero zero. Um, all right. How about uh, Department One Twenty Two, the Board of Selectmen's budget, um, Town Hall One also.
Paul, do you have anything to add? I have nothing to add, Mr. Chairman. All right. Questions, Frank? So one thing I'd like to mention for everybody's um, <coughs> information, it's really not a budget issue, but if you look at special accounts, there's an annual trade show called the Boston Mass Daily Administrators uh, Association. And I was curious to know, you know, it's always a good thing to go to those things, but I just have the ones left out. But I asked for a little bit of information about what goes on in it, and it was actually pretty interesting. Um, they, they discuss all sorts of topics around the state, about financing, about initiatives, about you know, various things. One of the things though, that came out that you mentioned, Paul, is that in fact, I, I don't know if it's open to the public, but I believe that people could attend it if they wanted to. Well, we, we would have to uh, pay a conference fee, but. Do you know how much it is going to be the first seven years? That's the, I think that's the fee for the town. Uh, I see. So it might be like a six year old. I think it's more than that. It's a two and a half day um, yeah. event. So, right. but we certainly, if uh, there was a number <coughs> of two members that wanted to try it out next year, we could, we could see if we could arrange that. Yeah. Just to ex have the experience and sort of see uh, the types of discussions and the types of seminars and um, different uh, <coughs> types of collaboration that's going on there amongst all the cities and towns in Mass. I think it gets into some longer range. Is the, is the agenda online? If I send that around, we can. You missed it for this year. And but I can send the agenda uh, just so you can get a, a sense of what type <coughs> of uh, program is being run. Well, that right was that, interesting to know what the detail might. Sure. Thanks. Thank Other questions? Uh, just a quick one. What's the significance of the asterisk after some of the titles? Oh, so it's. So it's indicating which union they're in. Okay. It's an A and B classification. So that's the asterisk in terms of the A and B. Correct. Okay, thank you. Yeah. And that one's negotiated annually, I believe? The A and P is negotiated annually. It's not officially a union, it's a collaboration of uh, the department heads and uh, various department head assistants that are not turned into the union. Tom, you had a question? Yes, thanks. I have a question to the subcommittee. Um, was there any discussion at how the uh, salary for the town administrator was arrived at? <coughs> Some. Um, obviously, they, they negotiated um, with all the income, and he is in the lower staff. Um, and I'm, I'm sure that it, we had very limited discussion, but enough to figure out that it was discussed, obviously. Um, and it's, you know, it's set to be reflective of somebody new in the job, but obviously is not. Well, the reason I'm asking is, for all the years that I've been on Ways and Means, probably the one area of criticism that I've received as a member of Ways and Means is the fact that the town administrator, uh, based on the salary, uh, makes more than the governor of the state, and that has rubbed people the wrong way, and I've gotten a lot of negative feedback on that, and I'm just trying to find out if there's some way I can try to justify that. People, I, I, I'm not trying to say that the people that are earning that aren't worth it. I'm just trying to justify why is it there? Why, why is it? I'll start with comps, but I, I, don't, I can't answer you. I have no reason to think it's out of the line. Yeah, with the selectmen, actually, the negotiation. And there's nobody from selectmen here, correct? Hmm? Yes. No, but if you're asking where where should you go, I don't know. Besides, he might be worth more. <laughs> that was humorous, Tom. Mm. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Brad, you still have a question? I'm good, Brad. Okay. So, um, so I can answer it, I guess, a little bit from history and then a little bit from what I know um, being involved in some of the associations around uh, Middlesex 3 
being one of them, which Burlington is, is a member of. So when when I served on the board and we would we would talk about people's salaries, the town administrator's salaries, there were two components that we did when we negotiated a salary for the town administrator. One was the negotiation with the person before you and their and their qualifications, but the other was really going out and kind of taking a toll of what the salaries were in the Commonwealth, what other town administrators were being paid in the Commonwealth, and Burlington statistically had been lower. If I don't know if some of the members who have some history here, um, the discussion of the town administrator's salary isn't one that sh shows up a lot because it's a, it's a negotiation between the selectmen and it's not union-based. Um, however, I know that we discussed it when we were on the board about what the levels were and what other town administrators were making around the Commonwealth when um, Bob Mercer retired and John Petrin came in. There was a long study on that one because they were trying to then comp it out. Additionally, now, um, for better or for worse, and I, I, I think it's sad, but a lot of people don't go into public administration as easily, right? So there are um, presently a lot of openings as town managers and town administrators am amongst the Commonwealth. So um, the interviewing process has become very difficult and the jobs and those qualified to take the jobs um, has become slim pickings. So there are more openings than qualified people, hence um, communities are now really paying attention to who, um, who they're getting and then what they're paying. So I can tell you as an answer, Tom, that the best way to describe that to people is um, Burlington didn't just pick a number when, when the numbers were adjusted from Mr. Mercer's salary to Mr. Petrin's salary, there was a study done on what the average town accountants, I'm sorry, town administrators were making. Um, and then in addition to that now, um, we've had some discussions in some of the associations and some of the meetings. They, there are communities having trouble finding qualified town administrators. Um, there's just not enough of them, quite frankly, by comparison to the amount of jobs that are open. So um, we got pretty lucky. Okay. Other questions? Uh, I'll, make a, I'll make a motion to approve the budget um, for $575,018. Second. Second. Great. All in favor? Uh, opposed? Extensions? Um, 13.00. Thank you. 12.01. Uh, oh, oh, you abstained. Sorry. Tom, I count more carefully. Double checking on my counts. Um, next up, legal. One, Department 151. Um, Uh, questions, Tom. Yeah. I had, um, <clears throat> I know, I don't know if it was last year or two years ago. I had requested if we could get kind of a breakdown of uh, which department is um, requesting the legal assistance and how much. And the reason being is that I, I, I think it's very helpful to determine that if one department is utilizing most of the resources in, in legal uh, fees, then maybe there's a problem there and maybe we need to do something to assist them so that they don't have that and I don't see that here and I was just wondering is um, is that something that could be done <clears throat> uh, 
Uh, we've done a, we did a four year a couple of years ago or so. Mm -hmm. We can certainly have somebody go through the bills and try to allocate it to a department. Okay. If, uh, well, I'm just saying it would, it would be nice to see on a, on a fairly yearly basis. I, I, if it's not, if it's a lot of work, then you can specifically request it. But if it's not, it'd be nice to have as part of the package just to see, you know, X Y Z department is responsible for ten thousand, and D E F department is responsible for one hundred and fifty thousand. You know, obviously the question is why. Well, maybe because that's how it goes in that particular field. But it would be nice to have that information. Um, Frank. I would just point out that this applies only to the government side, it's really part of the government and budget, and contracts obviously you have a lot of it each year, but that I haven't seen a breakdown, so I think if you're saying if you can do it, it would be helpful. Look into it, yes. Yeah, thank you. Steve? Just a quick question, which cable TV provider is up for negotiation this year? I believe the one that's in process now might be Comcast. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, do we have any surprises in the legal budget, you know, vis-a-vis -vis something like a Charles George or anything of that? It's no, going to have no, some of, no significant ones. And um, do we have a new town council as of the 19th? Yeah, absolutely. 19th of February? Yes. We do. You want to elaborate on why that midstream termination? I think uh, David covered it well. Uh, Blackman interviewed, I think, six firms over a year ago. Uh, they made a selection. Uh, a lot of that selection was based on the attorney that we were being assigned. Uh, shortly after signing up with the town, uh, that attorney left for private practice. Um, we were reassigned to existing attorneys within that within the field, and, and I think the firm was probably a little bit short-handed from losing their star star player, and um, the remaining communities that got farmed out, I just, I, I don't I, I don't feel like they were able to sort of keep up with our workload in a timely fashion. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Frank. To follow up on the question of the, uh, the loading, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. If that's the case, can we see what the, the major cases are that are before council? Yes. Okay, just maybe an email to let us know what they are. Thank you. Thank you, Frank. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. All right. Um, other questions? Uh, With that said, we, we haven't gone over the number in the, in the last couple of years. We just considered some of the issues that we know uh, we have been dealing with. <clears throat> So, so again, it, it is a good question. We can move around some money towards the end of the year through omnibus articles, or yeah. whether it needs to become a part of a ways and means pot that we have more money for that. And I don't, I don't know if I would go that way. Uh, but with that said, right now, it's still a, a high number or, or a number that they're comfortable with. Um, and there's a reason why it's a well, Just reference Charles George because it was six or seven hundred thousand dollars that came out of the blue, as you might recall. Uh, so right. just hoping nothing like that is on the horizon. All right. I'm just noting that the expended and encumbered number for 2018 was really close to the 202,000 that was allocated. So That's basically the they used it up. Um, anybody knows how many times we might get sued in 2020? <laughs> <laughs> in on the number. <laughs> <laughs> They're all estimates, <lessons. laughs> <Yeah>. right? <laughs> all right, anything further? Mr. 
Chairman, um, motion to approve the legal budget in the amount of $210,000 level funded. Second. Uh, Phil, you already, you have a quick new question? No, 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 I'm raising okay. my hand, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Yay. Free all in favor. I'm going to be first, Mr. <laughs> Chairman. I'm going to be first. All right, all those in favor? <laughs> Twelve opposed. Anybody opposed? Opposed. And, uh, any abstentions? Okay. So twelve one zero. All right. Um, so we move on to the Human Resources Budget Department one fifty two. Questions? Oh. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> Just want to make sure that are you still comfortable in having serving two masters and able to do your job as well as you would like to? I am. Okay. I, am. Right. Yeah, I like having the uh, the ability to work with all the employees who receive a town of Burlington paycheck, um, ensuring the consistency, the, the locations, and uh, working with two different uh, two different bosses is, is fine. Um, everyone communicates very well. Um, I'm able to communicate among everybody and <coughs> people can find me, you know, my email address finds me everywhere I am. My phone rings everywhere that I am, it seems. So, yeah, it works out just fine. Great. It's been a really great collaboration between the town and the schools for many years uh, on human resources and uh, I think that uh, not many towns have a shared human resources office with the school, so it's something <coughs> which really worked well he here for us. Uh, Steve. How do you determine the split between the schools and the and the town side for your salary? That is that predates me actually. That's when the position was set up. It's, it's it goes back to when the position was set up. So okay, it's just a fixed ratio at that percentage. Yes. Okay. The idea was utilization. Utilization. Yeah. The ratio of employees. And the number of I was just thinking there was more employees on the school side. Okay. And there's a lot more turnover on the school side, typically, with teachers than the town side. Yeah. Anyway, it, I guess maybe the other way point is it time to look at that again just to see that it's still the right, the right split? It's, it is, it's close enough to 50-50 and, you know, I, I work wherever I'm needed, so it, it seems to be all right. <coughs> okay. Other questions? 
Um, seeing none. Make a motion to approve the budget for $148,329, an increase of 0.55% from the previous year. Thank you. Second. Second. Uh, all in favor? Uh, all opposed? Extensions? 1300. Um, David, the subcommittee vote was at 2 0. Okay, thanks. Um, moving on, how about the uh, next up is Town Hall 2 and the Council on Aging? Just Bill, you got a. Uh, yeah, yeah, I wasn't going there. I was going with the town clerk. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm working my way down to the top of the. 541, uh, thanks for that help, Mr. Allen. Should have put them in some of the other order, but okay. You have a pretty extensive cover sheet. Uh, there was, the vote was three zero in favor, and thank you, Mr. Chairman, for helping me out on that. My first go around with subcommittees. And uh, the biggest item is, it's up 9.35 percent. The biggest item is outreach, and I'm going to have Marge explain that to you. Okay, so um, I'll start kind of at the beginning. I, I have three outreach workers. Um, one of them is a full-time employee at 35 hours, and two of them are part-time at 19 hours each. Um, I'm, gonna call her, I'm gonna call them by name just because it's easier to do so, um, so we don't get confused. Um, Andrea is um, the outreach worker who is paid partially through the town for eight hours and then 11 hours from the state formula grant. Um, Audrey is the um, outreach worker who was paid through the Cummings Foundation grant. Um, so there's a couple of things going on here. Um, most importantly is work is increasing. Um, they're getting very overwhelmed. We have more and more seniors um, coming into, um, aging in, shall we say, to our services. Um, and we have um, as well, we have folks who aren't quite 60 but also need assistance that we will often help just because it's the type of work, it's the type of assistance that we do with the seniors. Um, I requested um, last year and I'm requesting again this year to increase her hours, the Andrea's hours. Um, so I requested to 35 hours. So what we're looking for is 24 hours from the town, 11 hours remaining with the formula grant. Um, and then money was put aside for the for Audrey, who does who's under the Cummings grant, because we're going to run out of money during the year, and I will reapply for that grant next year um, for another four-year or five-year grant. Can you just give a short description of what outreach? There's no short you? description of what they do. <laughs> <laughs> right. They do everything. Um, so they. As simple as they take a phone call, somebody needs um, a homemaker or Meals on Wheels, and they refer to those, you know, to who can help them for that, um, all the way to people who are literally dying of cancer and have no family. Um, and we, um, over the years, have helped many people like that, and they can be very labor intensive. Um, so, and it's just everything in between. We have people who are, a lot of people who are homebound, um, just people who need kind of, support, um, you know, folks who, are, um, who have mental health issues often just need support and um, help just getting, getting, the, you know, getting through the process of um, dealing with Medicare every year or Social Security or um, any of the, the lovely um, uncomplicated issues that come along as you get older and retire. Um, and they can be really complicated and, and so this, the um, outreach workers will help with that. Um, mass health applications can take literally four days to get through. Um, so it just, it really, it, it's a whole myriad of things. And, and they'll go out and they'll, you know, they walk around the senior center scene talking to people, um, you know, gaining their trust, you know, so that if they or friends need help, they'll refer them. Um, so there's some of that as well. So you might walk in and they're goofing around, but they're not really goofing around. <laughs> Everything we do has a purpose. Great, all right, thanks. Uh, questions? Uh, John. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, more of a comment, and you know, one of the things that in working with Tom last year on Town Hall 2, 
it's really apparent to me is that there's a huge amount of work going on in terms of managing a lot of part-time people, which I know is a challenge, and I understand your desire to change that. And also, the uh, one of the reasons I had asked for other funding sources was was really based on my conversation with, our conversation with you last year, which is, uh, you know, it's pretty interesting to see that over 20% of your actual budget is being funded by grants. So um, so while obviously, you know, over 9% increase is a big one, uh, if March wasn't going for all these grants, it would be a 30% <laughs> increase. Uh, so, uh, you know, there's something to keep in mind uh, that uh, doing a great job trying to find other sources of money on that. And I know it takes a lot of time. Thank so, you. Thanks. All right. Um, Brad, just a second, Phil. Go ahead. Uh, hi, hi, Marge. Uh, I, I always have to mention my, my uh, neighbor around the corner who's, who's pushing 90 now, uh, bless her Easy. heart. But uh, she's been homebound for some time, and she relies on the, I mean, the, those of us in the neighborhood do what we can to help out, uh, uh, put the bird seed out, walk the dog, blah, blah, blah. But there are uh, technical issues, as you say, with paperwork and such that you know, the layperson can't handle. And uh, they, uh, they help out my neighbor constantly and she adores them. The, the, I mean, they're wonderful. Marge knows my neighbor. Uh, um, <laughs> I know her well. They're very, very patient with her and she just adores them and can't say enough about them. So they're doing good work out in the community. Thank you. Uh, sorry, Phil. Yeah, your turn. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The vote was 3 0 for 391 529. And I just would add if Marge would send you out the numbers that, you know, this number is not going to be declining in the next couple of years because it's. As you know, there's an enormous increase in the number of elderly uh, residents that we're going to have, I think, in the next five years. Our over 65 population will be up like 2,200. So uh, this isn't the last you're going to see of uh, increases in this budget. The, um, the word from the state is, I think I've said it before, we're looking at 30 years of increases. Maybe not as steep as right now, but we are looking at 30 years of increases before we level off. It's going to be ugly. Um, let's go here. Mike? Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Marge, could you, I think I heard that uh, a figure of 200, is that approximately the number of people eligible for this services in Burlington? Um, there are 6,300 seniors, 60 and over. 6,000. Mm -hmm. okay. And then how, how many actually do you end up working with? So we, um, we reach about 15 to 1,600 people a year. Um, not all of them need social services. Some of them are just coming to the center for activities, but the overall number is about as close to 1,600. Okay, thank you. Uh, Nick. Thank you, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> Mark, I'm just curious. Um, you mentioned a, a steep. How, I mean, how steep are we talking here? It's hard to say. I mean, I actually have, um, the town clerk gave me some numbers, which they're written out in the, uh, the cover sheet okay. of how the, the the, um, the ages, um, and I think it's what, how, I think we're probably like five or 10 people a month or something like that turning, Sorry. five or 10 people a month turning 60, something like that. O over the next year? Uh, yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah, it seems to be increasing about three to 400 a year. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Doug. <laughs> Put the stop on there, John. <laughs> <laughs> really just a, a question or a comment that we should be looking at this over the next few years because we keep talking about level services but this is a budget where level services isn't going to be level funded mm -hmm. and, and it's in the expensive realm of personnel and so it seems like almost like we have a capital budget plan <laughs> we should and like we see with the police uh, the police we have a long term where we say we're going to add how many officers over the next 10 years and it seems like that should be out there for us because as we look at our or you know, 3.5 percent blended increase or whatever. The, this this budget might put a hit on that, where some other departments don't have that. So it would just be nice to know. All right. uh, move, move, working my way down, David. Uh, so we know the budget will again continue to admit, which makes sense. Um, as far as the budget as a whole, is the, the biggest need the whole budget. Yes. Yeah. What I, I, 
I do increase my, my supplies every year, yeah. but I get more money from the state every year. So rather than putting that on the town, I put that to the state. Sure. But from a personnel standpoint, mm -hmm. And that was my intent when I hired, that when I went with the second outreach worker. I've just, you know, I'm, al I'm always thinking about how I'm going to build this department so we can meet our needs. Um, so I've always tended to, you know, when I started here 17 years ago, I had 11 hours of outreach and that was it. So I've always tried to build it slowly, you know, so I can prove that I need that, those increased hours. But so yes, I mean, it, it, it kind of goes with what I've been trying to do the whole time. Uh, Frank? Probably. And the only downside to that, um, there's a big benefit, which I think is continuity and all that. The downside is obviously we can carry uh, 25, 28% loading on some benefits. Right. We also attract better people. And considering, when you consider that we, we send these people into homes of seniors you know, with nobody. Full time mm -hmm. to attract better yeah. people. Yeah. Yeah. So I actually question whether or not this budget. I think the primary focus, Mr. Chairman, is the people that are over 90 years old, we're gonna have more and more of those who are gonna require more type of outreach on a regular basis for wellness checks and things of that sort, where you might only be checking on somebody now once every couple of weeks. You got somebody who's 95 years old living by themselves, which we're gonna have more of, we, we hope. <laughs> uh, so I think that's one of the focuses that we're gonna to have to worry about in the, yeah, you too, Frank. <laughs> <laughs> Very soon, Siri is going to do wellness checks. Anyway, Doug, you had a guy? I, I just had one more. So the, the Cummins Foundation runs out, mm -hmm. and you said you would reapply. I mean, do you have a good feeling about that? Is that something, I mean, has it I'll have out? to tweak the position we have now a little bit. Um, but, yeah, I think we can, I think we'll do okay. Okay, because that would lose 19 hours right. just to replace what we'd be losing. So that's yeah, Brad. I always get booed when I say stuff like this. I, I grew up in Florida, and let me just say it's beach weather already down there. So <laughs> just throwing that idea out there. I was saying it's cheaper to promote Florida, Frank. <laughs> I don't think we can send the outreach people to Florida. <laughs> I'll go. <laughs> All right. Uh, Marsh, do you have any income? Like, if people have a not low income, do you just tell, ever encourage them to just hire their own case manager to handle it? You know, no. Any uh, most and uh, some people will because we can't give the attention that they mm -hmm. really want if they have the money. Um, there are private case managers, right? Um, and we, but we do tend to get um, the lower income folks that really right. need our help the most. Yeah. Um, those are who are wealthier will call us and ask a question or two, and then they kind of move along. It's it is definitely the lower income ones that we end up. Once they're in a, many of them I'm guessing go into a PACE program. Not all of them, not and all not of all of them are. A lot of them will change their doctors. I know. Yeah. Um, but once they go into PACE, then they would have access to the social workers through. PACE. Unless they end up in the hospital, and then yeah. then we end up back in the picture again. So we end up not really being able to let them go completely because we need to track that. 
Yeah, it's a it's a vicious cycle. It seems like a terrible burden on the town. To yeah, really I mean, and part of it, it's you know, it's it's our job to make sure people don't fall through the cracks. Mm -hmm. So that ends up, you know, there's no one else that's going to do that. You know, the the state agencies are like, oh, they're here, they're there, they have this much money, they don't have this much money, and they'll they'll let them go, or the elder will say, I don't need you. We're a little more, um, we're a little more persistent. Yeah. And you know, if somebody says they don't need us, but we know they do, we'll. We'll keep working at it. So, we don't want anyone to fall through the cracks. I know That's it's hard. hard. It's really hard. Yeah. I think Frank and, and Doug had good ideas in terms of training up with a little more comprehensive planning for mm -hmm. for the next few years. Yeah. Yep. If if the number, as you say, is going to go up for be up for the next thirty years, then it shouldn't be hard, hard too hard to put together a multi year plan. Right. Um, and adjust it. So. <coughs> um, other questions. Brad. Uh, uh, again, uh, uh, do we have comps on staffing levels for COAs around the state? Or? It varies pretty widely on mm -hmm. what towns offer for that type of service. So okay. Fairly inconsistent. Okay. Very inconsistent. Thank you. Well, they probably offer what they can afford. <laughs> right. Yeah, there's, the larger cities will have, will have several, and the small <coughs> towns will have part-time maybe. So if I can piggyback on that, I think that's um, one of the comments that it goes back to the comment from Doug and, and the whole, you know, um, the ability to fund, but really what the level of services are. I know the committee talked about it a little bit last year. Um, it's a discussion that really should be had across the board for all departments. This is a very good example of it, right, where, you know, is it the will of the community to continue to level fund? the services, not funding-wise, I mean, the, you know, the services that we offer. And I, I think that's why, too, sometimes you, when you try to compare certain departments like a COA and other communities, it's hard because the will of one community versus the will of the other. Burlington has traditionally always been um, gracious, and I, I believe in what, the, in what we're doing, right, but gracious in what we offer to the residents. So, it, you know, the larger picture after budget season, I think, is about talking about you know, the services that Burlington um, offers and, and do we want to continue to do that, which, you know, in my opinion, is a really big conversation to have so that, because the numbers clearly would increase on a number of budgets if you think about the manpower that needs to be had, or the woman power, excuse me, the people power. <laughs> <laughs> Personnel power. <laughs> there you go. Um, but because, you know, we're in the business, really, of serving people, and, and to do that, you need need employees to do that really um, so it would be a good conversation to have at some point mr. chairman about and really to address it with town meeting to <coughs> you know and if the will of the community is to continue to provide what we've been providing even on a DPW level on you know we talk about it a lot with trash removal and, and different pickups you know what is the will of the community to do that because Marge's department is a perfect example of you have another comment, well, I, I, Just to differentiate here, this isn't a question of increasing the level of service. It's the flip side, which is the increase in the level of demand to provide the same level of service. We're going to have more people in need. Absolutely. I agree with you, but the, it's, it's not even about increasing the level of service. Because the demand is there, there's only two options if you don't fund it. You either decrease the level of service or you fund it, right? So, so it's, it's a very interesting conversation to have. And in this one, it drives it home because the numbers are there. But in, really across the board, you know, we, would, we could have this discussion because if, the, if, if we're holding a line, we're holding a line at a cost, and that's ultimately decreasing the services at some point to hold a line. Or do, do we say as a community, we're not holding that line, we're going to, you know, we're going to dip into the levy more because we, we want to keep our services at a certain number. Just food for thought. I agree, <laughs> though I also note that we've spent a great deal of effort managing the health care plan, managing expectations as well as the cost, and the retirement plan. We've got several big programs that the costs have gotten away from us, and we've had to be very proactive to keep them in check. Absolutely. And I think this one almost promises to sort of be the same kind of big number thing. So you're right. We need to look at it very closely. So anyway, uh, Brad? And, and while you're here, Marge, uh, how, how is the new space working out? We're loving the new space. Yeah, um, the upstairs activity room is turned into the favorite. 
our bridge group is up there, and people like to. Go. It's just it's warm, it's sunny, it's bright. Um, it's just a, it's a fun place to be. So yeah, we're it's it's taking everyone a little bit of time to kind of settle in. There's been some creaks and groans, but they're getting there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, Move to approve. Anything? Uh, motion to approve. I hear from Phil. Second. 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 All those in favor? Thank you. Uh, 13 in favor. Any opposed? Any extensions? 13-0-0. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, next up, what did you want to do next, Phil? Town clerk. Town clerk. Town clerk. <laughs> yes, sir. I'm on the right page. Thank you. Uh, 161. 161. Okay. Uh, the subcommittee voted 3-0 in favor of this. The grant total is 378.790, which is minus 6 0.78. However, if you take out uh, without elections, uh, since there's one less election, uh, the number is 324.967 or up one, uh, minus 1.27. So minus 6.76, minus 1.27. Uh, a couple of the highlights there in the full time, you'll see that's down 4.26% as a result of a, uh, uh, a longer tenured employee leaving and a newer employee coming in. Uh, contracted services, we have three uh, department heads that are leaving this year, uh, one of whom, John Clancy, as you know, has over 30 years, so we have archive and destruction issues. Uh, his entire uh, portfolio of communication, uh, hard copy and email has to be gleaned uh, from front to back, those things which have to be archived and those things that have to be destroyed, so that's up a little bit. Uh, the conference, uh, the melt account is up a couple of percent. Uh, that's because of the uh, um, conferences and uh, registration for the, uh, the assistant and the new employee. Uh, and uh, that's the, the bulk of the, uh, the issues. And our outstanding town clerk, Amy, has uh, any uh, answers for your questions? Anything to add? Nothing to add. Thank you, Phil. Uh, questions, Brad? So, so uh, two questions uh, for you, uh, Amy. Uh, why would the retirement of a department head kick off uh, a, a greater need for archiving material? Wouldn't that would you be archiving kind of as you're going on? Well, it does go on, but um, this year into next year, we currently have three department heads that are either leaving, moving, that kind of stuff. And um, what happens is um, Daniel does work with them about what needs to be moved off what can be destroyed, what is stuff that, you know, correspondence that they have, that kind of stuff. And so, therefore, that raises, um, at, at least with paper and stuff like that, if we can destroy it, we get rid of it. So that ad just adds extra cost to um, um, getting rid of all of that stuff um, in terms of contracted services. It's not all archiving. It's, there's, there's a lot of paper that can be physically gotten rid of, depending on what the uh, retention schedules are. Presumably, much of this has uh, uh, already been archived, for example. No, no. So some, some of it's been archived, but, some, but, but these are just copies it's sitting It's probably 50-50 it uh, in terms of whether it's been archived or not. So does that suggest? It suggests that we have to move forward. I mean, right now, the project that we're all working on is the the finishing up of the phase one of the electronic permitting system. When that gets phased in, then yes, um, true document management would be the next thing on the horizon. And some departments are taking the start with that, and um, I am encouraging them, but we also need to look at um, an overall electronic media plan. Okay, and I have one other thing. Uh, you mentioned uh, uh, a redesign of the website. Uh, it seemed like you just got the new one going not that many years or so ago. Well, it's been 2016. We had the, the last redesign. 2012 we did the full redesign. 2016 was just a minor look and feel tweaking. And so um, it's time to kind of relook at um, with the changes that have happened with social media and what departments really need to use in terms of social media um, is 
dri very much driving. There's some big changes in terms of how websites are being used. Um, so that's kind of the next thing. That'll be a long article. And I uh, and just one follow up, and I'll be done, Mr. Chair. Uh, uh, <laughs> is the uh, how much of the 108 IT <coughs> items were uh, addressed by the website, and are are any of those still on your department? Uh, uh, just, just looking at uh, 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 security and backups, et cetera, you know, uh, uh, the, the, the IT document from however many years ago it was, there were... The ISAC I, I, report? I, thank you. Uh, I, I, do any of those, do many of those uh, items fall into your department, and is, will the redesign um, be addressing any of those still well, remaining? Well, the biggest things that the redesign, I think, will deal with is um, access for electronic documents for public record requests. That's been the biggest, um, one of the biggest areas that need beefing up with the website. The other thing with the website is, again, social media and mobile <coughs> devices. Um, looking at our Google Analytics, about 60% of the access to the website is now through a mobile device. So um, getting that better handled with the website is, is one of the goals for the new design. And I always find it a challenge to find the library hours on my phone. <laughs> my desktop, it's not a problem. Yeah. Something about well, and that's one of the things is that the way the, the, the way the website is set up is is not been optimized correctly. I think for the uh, for mobile devices, and so that's one of the things that we're definitely pushing for with a new with a vendor too. Very good. Well, good luck. Thank you. Well, thank you. Could always use that phone to make a call. <laughs> <laughs> Was that your question, Phil? <laughs> Other questions? Uh, Frank. David and I were both going to ask a question of you, Amy. It sounds a little off the wall, but I'm hoping it's not. So we have an email from Jim Dari that went out, and it's about GIS staffing services and the consolidation of that throughout the town. Yeah. Um, I suspect it has not that much. GIS data is, is very, very valuable, but we really have an obligation to start getting everything in that format. The problem is nobody just completely owns managing and running the entry and the updating of the GIS content and managing the system when it's spread around. And um, the assessor does some of it. He has a budget of like six grand for it. And I think engineering services might do some of it. And I don't remember if they have a budget or not. You might see it. So my question is, do you have a position on whether we should consolidate this? Because you were on the email, and what do you think we should do? Well, um, part of it is um, a, a good piece of that has been consolidated. If you go to the website, um, if anybody has a device, if you go to the website and you go th either through the planning board site or through the um, general, uh, the town government, of the link that it goes to mappings, to the maps and um, bylaw. Um, on the maps there is an interactive map that is a GIS that's run by um, a vendor that we, that planning procured, which is um, AppGeo. And most of the information is starting to get put in there and be populated. Um, so, so what happened, what came out of the, um, the group that engineering, planning, and building have been working with with projects is they have implemented a good piece of that. Um, so, and, and, and my, like precinct maps, my um, election maps are up there too. Um, so it is starting to, to move forward. It hasn't been um, consolidated um, in terms of having one group in charge of it but I think that everybody kind of brought their pieces together. In fact, a piece of it was the, the money that was um, a first appropriated back in 2012 for mapping. And so a good chunk of that money, and I believe that warrant article was $20,000, um, a good chunk of that money went to driving this particular project. So it is there, it's just we've got to kind of bring some of the pieces together. So it's, it's, yeah, I guess the, sense that I'm getting from Jim is that everybody, well, he's budgeting some money. I think other departments provide 
personnel to deal with this admin stuff and keep it up to date. And AppGeo requires some care and meeting. Yeah. Right? Well, so so um, somebody should own it as a department. And, and he wants to get a group together to sort that out and get one department that's the owner. So it's a many to one, right? Right. Planning We're very close to being there. Through um, there is an organ, uh, there is a uh, a group that meets pretty regularly on Tuesday mornings. Um, the their acronym is DCM, and I can't remember what it is right now. But again, it's building, planning, engineering. Fire also comes. It's basically the group that sits and talks about what is going on with projects in town. So the so the enterprise wide discussion is going on there, and that's where the App Geo work started from. Mm -hmm. So I think it's just that we have to do a better job of maybe communicating to all the departments um, when those meetings are and what is going on with that. So um, I think that that would be one of the biggest things is just those meetings are starting, but we need to maybe just make sure everybody's looped in on, on the conversations. Works really well. And someone. Right now, um, I'm problem. getting the sense that, that um, at least from the DCM meetings, that I, I get regular emails from Josh Morris to says when the meetings are. So I, I, my understanding. No, he's in he's planning. planning. He's planning. I, so I think but it belongs in engineering. Think, um, there's yeah. a guy in the back of the room yeah. who should. So maybe <laughs> Try to solve the problem. It's been here for 20 years. <laughs> I haven't started till Friday, but I'm trying to solve it tomorrow. <laughs> well, I know, I know you don't need, you know, encouragement, but this is one thing that maybe just some encouragement should could could help move forward. And it's not your problem specifically, because other people. No, have been doing no, it's, it's been talked about. I mean, I think. Um, we er the town erred on the side of caution early on. I mean, a lot of communities have went out and hired GIS departments and maybe found out the department maybe was a little bit much for this type of thing. So we may benefit from that, being able to appropriately size what we want as opposed to um, overdoing it from the start. So that's one benefit of not having done anything uh, for quite so long. But, um, <laughs> Careful there. Well, Careful. Well, right. <laughs> I've, I've heard from Jim a lot on this, and uh, I do think uh, what Amy said last was that perhaps we, we are doing a better job with the GIS, but maybe it's not getting communicated to everybody that um, yeah, it has. Yeah, the complaint is that yep. let's, let's finally get it yep. organized. And Phil mentioned engineering services. I, that actually would be my first choice, but maybe you could sort that out. Uh, and I, I do agree, Paul and I have had conversations in regards to the website even, that um, I, I know it's on Paul's radar, so, um, and. A lot I, of I blips, a lot of blips on that. I think he's supportive, <laughs> right I mean, he's very supportive of that enterprise-wide type of solution. Coordinating so. it I think makes a lot of sense. And I think, like I say, Amy's last sentence is, I think that there is a little bit more GIS coordination going on, but possibly hasn't been that information hasn't been disseminated out to all departments that could potentially benefit from it, so. All right, anything else on that, or about uh, the budget here for the <laughs> town clerk? Um, anybody want to make a motion? So moved. I'll make a motion, 378,790, a decrease of 6.78%. Second. Great, all in favor? Thirteen in favor, any opposed? Extensions, thirteen zero zero. One more for the Board of Registrars. Yep. Uh, Phil, what you got? Yes. Uh, One sixty-two. Yeah, it's going to put a burr into your saddle, I'm sure. Um, the uh, 
The subcommittee voted unanimously in favor. The amount is $12,000, up 46.34%. Uh, the salaries full-time uh, for the registrars and the clerk are the same, $1,200. Uh, the census is up to, to $9,900 because the school department had contributed over the years $3,100 to this uh, line item, and they've chosen <coughs> They've informed the clerk that they're not going to do that anymore. So, so I suspect the school subcommittee will subtract three thousand dollars from the school department. So yeah, we're in favor of uh, of the uh, twelve thousand dollars, up forty six point three four percent. Sonia? Yes, Sonia. Thank you. Yes, please. Can, what was the um, what's the reasoning for not for not putting in the three thousand dollars? They didn't um, want to. <laughs> sorry. Didn't wanna. <laughs> this is for um, the census. Yes. I think they felt that um, this was an agreement that had been made a long time ago between the previous clerk and previous budget um, uh, business managers there. And um, the feeling that I got was that they feel that they're not the only department that benefited from the census, so why should they be paying into it? Um, and um, I mean, I do work very closely with the schools in terms of giving them information about school-aged children. We update our census from their lists. Um, so um, that's the only thing that I can see is that they just felt like why, why were they pitching in to it when other departments were pitching into it? And um, I guess maybe they just didn't see enough of a benefit to it. Um. It is a simplification, which in general is a, is a good well, thing. Well, and that's it. You know, it, 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 the, the feeling was, well, you're the one that's driving it. You're the one that's doing it, the census. You're the ones that mails it out. So why is schools paying into it? Anyway, does that satisfy you, Sonia? Or do you want to go ask, try to find the right person to ask? <laughs> Satisfied for now. Thank you. Okay. Other questions? Uh, I would just add that the school department also had to do a master plan in order to do their SBA application, so that master plan includes a school census estimate from these consultants who do that. So maybe that's another piece that they do have to pay for that in addition to, and it gives them, I guess, kind of the same information, but maybe not as accurate as what the census does. I don't know. Okay. Thanks. Other questions? Chairman, motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Thirteen in favor. Any opposed? Abstentions. Thirteen zero zero. While you're here, do you want to yes. give a plug for tomorrow? Yes. If you all are available tomorrow, um, in case you didn't know and you could look behind you, um, it is Burlington's uh, 220th birthday tomorrow, February 28th. So um, we're going to have from the clerk's office. We're going to have a little celebration with cake and and. Um, water and we'll have um, a uh, card that everyone can sign. <laughs> and, How does that get archived? Um, it's a Friday. What? <laughs> yes, it will. It's buried in the backyard. <laughs> <laughs> I, need so, I need some new artwork in my office. So it might, yeah. But yeah, just um, it was something in, um, looking at the safe that's in my office and it struck me and I finally, you know, sat down and did the math and said, oh my goodness, we're at 220. So, um, <laughs> We don't look like day over 215. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I did make the mistake at one point in time putting on my clerk's Facebook page that my birthday was February 20, uh, 28th, and I kept getting all these birthday notices. And I'm like, this is not my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> I was saying happy birthday. So. What's, okay. what's astounding is it's 20 years beyond our bicentennial celebration, which mm -hmm. for me seemed like yesterday. Yeah. But right. that's what happens, I guess. When so, you get yes, if you'd right. like to come by, glad to have everybody come. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Um, we have.
Did everybody get, so we have potentially one more piece of business, which is the minutes from February 6th. Um, I think Joellen ma mailed them around and we got one small correction online, which is great. Um, any other comments on those minutes? A motion to approve, perhaps? To move. Second. All right, all in favor of approving the minutes of February 6th? Um, looks like 12 in favor, opposed, any opposed? Uh, abstentions, one abstention. Oh, great. Um, I, let's see. So a couple of things uh, in next week's schedule are gonna get moved around. I'm gonna, I'll mail around a new, uh, an update. Uh, some of the town hall one things are gonna move to next week on the 13th and one of them will move to the 20th. I'm gonna be out of town, so Steve's gonna run the, run the meeting next week. Um, I will be an email, so if you need me, um, I'm still around, but um, it should work out okay. It will be a little bit of a busy meeting, but uh, this is pretty good. We've been here for only an hour and 15, and hopefully the snow hasn't started to hold anybody down. So thank you all, it's great to see you. And, uh, Stay warm and dry. Second. All in favor? Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.